Did you know that multiple editors, colorists, VFX artists, and audio engineers can all work together in the same app, in the same project, with one copy of the same shared footage on their computers at the same time? Yeah, I know, it's so cool. And what's even better is that this multi-user collaboration workflow works with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. After setting this up, you'll have bin, timeline, and clip locking so that everyone can work together. You can chat within the app, and it costs next to nothing because you get to pick your own storage. Today, I'm gonna show you how to do this with just an off-the-shelf SSD. We're covering a lot today, but as usual, I've broken the tutorial into four sequential chapters. And if you stick around until the end, I'll even show you how to delete a shared database because that's not something that's built into Blackmagic Design software and it's vital to know. So if you're ready to eliminate the conform process or just get some help from other creatives to help turn around projects faster, <laughs> then let's jump in. Pick a computer. Pick your favorite computer. For me, it's the new M1 Max MacBook Pro. This computer is gonna do three tasks. It's gonna act as a video editing station, a file server, and a project server that's gonna run the shared Postgres SQL database. And the two reasons you might need to set up a Postgres SQL database for Resolve instead of the default disk database are one, if you wanna open the same project in another edit bay in the same facility without needing to import and export a project, or two, if you're gonna use Resolve's multi-user collaborative workflow features, the point of this tutorial. The computer you pick to run the project server should stay on and be available anytime other computers need access, and it needs to be on-premise on the same network. If you have the luxury of a high-speed fiber internet connection, you could potentially tunnel in through a VPN connection remotely, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Go to Blackmagic Design's support page. Links are in the description to download the DaVinci Resolve project server software. It's a standalone app and the best way to find the latest version is by clicking on DaVinci Resolve and Fusion software icon box and then scrolling down to the latest downloads. Follow the prompts to complete the installation like any other application and reboot the computer. When you first open the project server, you're gonna notice it looks a lot like the project manager in Resolve, but it is in fact different and it's stripped down to only performing database management. The correct version of Postgres SQL comes with the DaVinci Resolve project server, so it's an old version, so don't be tempted to go get the new version on your own. That's not gonna work, I already tried that. Click the icon in the header section to create a new database within project server. The naming rules are not gonna allow for spaces, just like disk databases, so feel free to use underscores to make it readable. A simple visual flair that you can add is to right click to load a small image like this 200 by 200 JPEG, to help quickly identify each database. For instance, you might use a client logo to use different databases for each client or brand. Now we need to share the database. Click the Enable Share button at the top, which will ask you to authorize the configuration of the PostSQL server. Just enter your user admin credentials, and you'll see blue left and right arrows to indicate that the database is now shared. Blackmagic created kind of a cheat sheet text file if you click on the top right to generate and export an access key. This will include the IP address of the project server and login information, so you don't have to think about it. Suppose you're curious about this information, and I always am curious. <laughs> In that case, you can open the access key with text edit or see the IP address from the project server up under file with the network interface drop-down menu. The point of this file is to send it to a computer that needs access to the database. It's tiny, so you can email it or use AirDrop. And since I'm editing from the project server computer, I'll just drag that access key into the DaVinci Resolve project manager. Time for me to run upstairs to my son's computer, which is going to act as the assistant client computer. Before I add this access key, it's a good idea to make sure you're running the same version of DaVinci Resolve on all the machines. They don't all need to be the paid studio version, but they should be the same number. The free and paid versions come out in tandem, so you can grab the latest version from the Blackmagic support page. And for reference today, I'm working with 17.4.3. Now on the assist client computer, after you've launched Resolve, click the upper left icon in the project manager to show and hide databases, and simply drag the access key file into the project manager window, and bam. Sorry, I grew up with too much I'm Gassi in my home. Anyways, as you can see, you don't need any of the project server installation stuff going on for the client computers. However, the project server does not store any of the footage or media assets. It only keeps the databases that hold the projects that point to your media assets. The footage is stored wherever the heck you want it to live. So next up, let me show you how to share a single SSD to collaborate with one copy of the footage. 
We're gonna connect two Macs using a cheap but long gigabit ethernet cable for a basic scenario that could even be used on set. And if your workstations sit closer together, you could use a Thunderbolt cable to bridge them for much faster speeds. On my MacBook, I needed to use a Thunderbolt to ethernet adapter, which of course I'm gonna link this in the description. You don't need a specialty crossover cable like in the olden days. An off-the-shelf ethernet cable is gonna give you about 75 to 95 megabytes per second of real-world video data transfer. Once you plug in both computers, go to System Preferences, Network, and allow them to connect over DHCP with a self-assigned IP address. DHCP is an automatic way for computers to generate a unique IP address. It can change over time, so you might want to set a manual static IP for long-term use, but this is going to get you quickly started with no networking knowledge needed at all. This SSD has all the footage on it. It's a good idea that the drive be as fast as possible. NVMe SSDs like the Samsung T7s or the SanDisk Extreme Pros, they fit this build perfectly and they're very accessible. You can go get them at Costco. So to share it out, plug it into the Project Server computer, my MacBook Pro, head over to System Preferences again, click Sharing, then check the box for file sharing and hit the plus button to add your volume or SSD that you wanna share. You can also drag it in there from the desktop. This is gonna share the drive out over SMB protocol. Under the user section, make sure your user account on this computer has read and write access on that drive. Read and write means precisely what it sounds like. It means you can see the files and manipulate or edit any changes. Keep this in mind when we get to bin locking. Now over here on the client assistant computer, open Finder, click the Go drop down menu and go down to Network. The shortcut is Command Shift K. Find the editor server computer that was shared and connect as and enter the login information as if you were logging in on the server computer. An alternate way of connecting is to go to the bottom of the go menu and connect to server or use command K. Using connect to server, you can enter the local IP address of the server computer, the MacBook Pro, by typing in smb colon slash slash and then the address that you want to mount to. The advantage here is that you can also bookmark the server computer's IP address with the plus icon for future use. Real quick, before we move on, I want to welcome you if you're new here and introduce myself. I'm Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips, where I help you craft stories that make a difference and stand out. I'm an editor that loves teaching DaVinci Resolve, so if you're into that, subscribe right now so you don't miss out on next week's tip. I also have a lot of tutorials on the channel already that you're not going to find in other places to cover the common pitfalls. Thank you so much for that support. Now let's dive into Resolve so I can show you the magic of collaborating in the same project at the same time. Dynamic project switching lets you have multiple projects open simultaneously, which I use to copy and paste between projects or queue up a batch of deliverables all at once. However, dynamic project switching does not work with shared Postgres SQL projects. So you need to disable dynamic project switching if it's on. This is a simple right click. Create a new project in the project manager and open it up. Go to the file menu and down to enable collaboration. Save it. And from now on, Live Save is turned on for every click or change. Note here that you're gonna need to turn on Enable Collaboration for every new project that you wanna work on together with your buddies. Create proxies. Feel free to add footage to your project on the client computer, and I suggest creating proxy files on a low bandwidth solution like Gigabit Ethernet. One of my favorite codecs is 4K Blackmagic RAW 12 to 1 compression. That's what you're watching right now, which is relatively small and high quality, but it does use about 370 megabits per second. And a smaller proxy at 2K resolution with H.265 compression only uses about 10 megabits per second. Not only is it going to play easier through the Ethernet cable, but it also takes up much less hard drive space. And side note, it makes a project archive easy to send over the internet. Now, if you don't have a recent computer with H.265 decoders, ProRes Proxy and DNX HRLB at 2K are about 40 megabits per second, and they're both battle-tested workhorse codecs. ProRes Proxy is more for a Mac workflow and DNX HR for Windows. Essentially, you're gonna edit with the proxy files and then export with the full resolution originals. The proxy files link behind the scenes and get used whenever you have the checkbox selected under the playback menu for use proxy proxy media if available. Uncheck it and you're back to the raw clips. I have a full tutorial on this with a link in the description. It's also worth pointing out that each client computer can locally have its own cache files for the best performance. You can set that location in the project settings, under master settings, and working folders for cache files location. And if by chance on the assistant computer you see red offline media, 
There is an issue with Resolve not looking at the same file path, but it can be relinked easily with the broken chain link icon on the edit page and pointing to the closest folder that you know the media resides. One more quick thing to point out with offline media is that some of the newest cameras will shoot 10-bit formats that are simply not supported in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Instead of saying not supported, it's going to say offline. This is the moment when you need to either upgrade to the paid version or just decide not to film with 10-bit settings on the camera. Identity badges in the lower right let you change your name to be something more personal than the computer host name. And if you click on the person icon, you can choose your favorite color too. The color is helpful because it lets you visually see what bin another project another member is working on. And if you need to get access to a locked bin, you can click the chat window down in the lower right to message them within DaVinci Resolve. No Slack or Microsoft Teams or even internet is needed. After sending a message, it'll appear orange on the other computer to see a new message notification. Bin, timeline, and clip locking. Bin locking is one of my favorite three things that Avid Media Composer does an excellent job at. This is the crux of post in most big budget productions. DaVinci Resolve kicks this up a notch by not restricting collaboration to editorial, but also finishing, mixing, and color. And it does this by utilizing bin, timeline, and clip locking, which depends on which page you're working on. This locking term prevents version conflicts and means the first person to access it gets read and write permissions. Everyone else gets read only permissions. As soon as a project member clicks away from their timeline, bin or clip, in the case of the color or fusion page, it becomes unlocked so anybody else can gain full access to it. It's helpful to organize a project so an assistant has their working folders of bins and the editor has theirs because the first person to open a bin has read write access. You can see who has this full access to the contents of a bin by the colored icon from the other creative's computer. Suppose an assistant needs to help add graphics to an editor's timeline. In that case, the editor can go to the color page to unlock the bin so the assistant can duplicate the timeline and then drag it into his own working bin. Blackmagic, please make this a keyboard shortcut. I'm dying yet. Duplicate timeline, that's all I'm asking for. Or you could copy and paste the clips into their own timeline in their own bin so you have full access to it. The same principle applies to an audio engineer working in the Fairlight page since both the edit and Fairlight pages work on an entire timeline at once. In contrast, a colorist or VFX artist can work on one clip at a time in the color or fusion pages, and they can both work on the same shot simultaneously because fusion and color manage the changes in independently. Can you see the power this has to work effectively with everyone together? To refresh the changes from another creative, click the refresh icon in the upper right of the timeline viewer to get the latest color grade. This is a manual refresh, so it's not changing on you unexpectedly during a supervised session with people sitting over there behind you. You can also click to update on the clip in the timeline or refresh by clicking the bin in the media pool. If you wanna always have read and write access to a specific bin because you're worried another person will jump in and hog it, you can manually lock it so even after you leave it, you'll still be the only editor with read write control. To do this, right click and choose lock bins. And a lock icon will indicate that nobody else can mess with it. And then you can manually unlock it with the right click option as well. I wouldn't keep a bin manually locked from day to day because of the overused getting hit by a bus metaphor. On the flip side, if you're the first one into a bin and don't want read write access because you're just window shopping, you can option click the bin, alt on a PC, so someone else can go in and make the changes. The read only mode has an eyeball icon. Timeline comparison tool is a cool feature that's not unique to shared collaborative projects in Resolve, and it's something I haven't used much yet, but I plan to in 2022. It's a window that offers a stacked visual timeline representing the differences between two different versions of sequences. To use it, go to the media pool, right click on the timeline you want to compare against and choose to compare with the current timeline. You can change the zoom level using the slider on the right, open a difference index on the left, and right click to accept the changes from one timeline to the next. Close the window out in the lower right. Now, are you as pumped as me? I can almost guarantee that you might set up a test database that you'll want to delete in this new PostgreSQL project server and Blackmagic Design safeguards you from doing so. That makes sense, but if you need to get rid of it, here's how you do it. In the DaVinci Resolve Project Manager, right click the database you no longer want to disconnect it. It's not deleted at this point. You need a tool like PG Admin 4, which you can download for free. The link is in the description. PG Admin 4 can remove it from the system altogether. Install it like any other app and create a quick password so no freelancers come messing with your precious work. Click the servers and enter the password DaVinci to get access. Right click the database you want gone forever, no turning back, and choose delete drop. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Since the demystifying database tutorial has been out, it's been highly requested all year, so this is my thank you. 
Check out this tutorial on screen right now to learn more about disk databases and best practices, or if you'd like to learn about what they don't teach you in film school about DaVinci Resolve, click on the playlist on screen right now. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.